Hello and welcome to the vlog. At the end of the last video, I left you with Jasmine and I on the boat in the top lock at Etruria, about to make the very sharp turn almost back on ourselves to start down the Calden Canal. There's that lock on the left, and there's a boat, not mine, doing the turn. It's quite tight, as you can see. This is what that turn looks like from the boat. I've added in the back camera as an extra perspective. The sign helpfully points the way, just in case you didn't quite know where you were going. Probably of more use is the sign to the water point, and we did briefly stop at the services building to empty the loo and throw out some rubbish. It's that brick building on the right. While we were here, we heard that another narrowboat vlogger was moored nearby, so we popped to see her. Aboard this boat is narrowboat girl Emma and her mum. A link to their channel is in the description. Hello! Hello! Oh! <laughs> Sorry, it's the wrong person. Hello! <laughs> a brief stop for a cuppa, then we went on our way past the Industrial Museum. And the statue of renowned canal engineering pioneer James Brindley. In the distance, the suburbs of Stoke-on-Trent which we'd soon be travelling through. First of all, the little matter of a staircase lock pair, the Bedford Street locks. A staircase is where one lock directly empties into the one below, rather than having a water-filled pound between them. So the bottom gates of one lock are the top gates of the next. They're not complicated, but because one empties into the other, you have to have the entire flight set up ready for you before you go in. If going up, you want the bottom lock empty and all the rest full. If going down, you want the top lock full and all the rest empty. There are signs to guide you, although I did see a novice boater totally ignore them and fill both locks before coming down, which is just wrong. The middle gates are very leaky, and if you're filming, it's advisable to have a waterproof cover on your gear. With the boat in the bottom lock, Jasmine went on to empty the top lock into the bottom one to bring me up to the middle level. This should make things as clear as canal water. Here's the boat being raised up in the bottom lock. And here's the top lock almost empty because it's being drained into the bottom lock. Once the bottom lock is totally full, any overspill gets sent down this culvert to the side. From the boat's perspective, it's all fairly standard stuff.
out of the locks and up to the first of many, many very tight turns on the Calden Canal. What's worse with this one is that someone tied a floating pontoon immediately after the bend, taking up quite a lot of the canal width, which would have made negotiating past a boat coming the other way rather troublesome. Why it couldn't have been left further back, I do not know. We felt like celebrities going past this building on the left. It's a restaurant, I think, and people eating there took photos of us and the boat going past. <laughs> Through another little lock and past the Shelton area of the city. We're up high here, looking down on creation, and the only explanation we can find is that the canal builders were jolly hard working. I'm going to sound like I'm moaning, I know, but apart from the amazing number of tight bends on the Calden, the other thing you notice is how narrow it is in parts. I mean, I know it's a narrow canal, but truly it's ridiculous. Here's Hanley Park, which looks extremely pleasant. In fact, a lot of the time you'd never know you were in the middle of a city. The canal area is so green and tree-lined. and then other bits give it away. I did say we were high up, and the views are far-reaching. A kiln hints at Stoke's world-famous reputation for pottery. It's why the canals were built here. It should also have a world-famous reputation for low canal bridges. The ones coming up the Trent and Mersey through the city could lop your head off, and the trend continues here. Narrow canal, tight bend, boat coming the other way. They managed to break very effectively, I must say, and we passed without incident. But look what lies just beyond! And people ask me why I don't have any kind of cabin at the back. This is why. Eek! Bridge 11, Ivy House Bridge, is a lift bridge with which you have the power to stop the traffic on the road. It's all electronically and hydraulically controlled, and with Jasmine leaping off the boat to operate it, no trouble at all. As a solo operator, it would have meant some running about to stop the boat, open the bridge, get the boat through and close it again, but with crew, the inconvenience to the road users, who might otherwise get irate, is minimised. Not a lot of traffic on this occasion, thankfully. Obviously I paused while Jasmine lowered the bridge and let the traffic flow again, then she came back aboard. You're still technically in the suburbs, but it all gets very green again after that. Squint and you can just see the houses through the trees. 
Did I mention it gets really narrow in parts on this canal? Wait till you see what it's like further along. Oh my. If it wasn't for the pedestrians, you'd swear we were on the African Queen. I'm Humphrey Bogart and Jasmine's Catherine Hepburn. Pulling over as far as I could to pass this one, you can't really see it, but the boat ground onto the silt and tilted sideways somewhat. Luckily, not a bad patch, and I slid straight off it when they were past. I know you will say I'm grumbling again, but, well, tough. I was getting rather tired and tetchy by this point. It had been a long day, and the cauldron was surprisingly stressing me out with all its twistiness and narrowness. And hardly any decent places to moor either, because all the banks look like this. Breathe in again. Eventually we got to Milton, about four miles out of Stoke. I'd had enough, and we stopped. That's it for now. Cheerio.